Ryan with Mist Geek here, and today just a quick video to wrap up the Micro Bit X series. We're done. It was that easy. Uh, we're not doing any crazy mods. We're not doing AGC. We're not changing the uh, output transistors. We're not doing a next gen display. We're not doing KD8 CDC, CEC, or whoever it was. It's uh, fine firmware. Nothing wrong with it. I'm just not doing it. I'm not doing any actual mods <laughs> to the Micro Bit X. And that's because I've already done a trillion mods to the BitX40, and I have I've done enough BitX modifying for a, for a while. So um, the only thing that I really need for this is more audio. So I have a solution to that, and it is homebrewed, so to sort of, and uh, it's also battery powered, optionally, so that I can take it with me uh, portable if I want. And so instead of just telling you what it is, let me show it to you. All right, so this is the speaker that I have, and I've got it, of course, apart right now because uh, I've just been constructing it. I'm using one of those little LM386 boards you can buy on Banggood or Amazon, and I'll put links down here so that you can see where to get these. This is the low power version, however, so it'll only take up to 12 volts. Um, my bench supply runs at 14, so I'm running it off battery. Uh, I've got a battery pack over here. I have a billion of these double A's, so no problem there. Um, you might notice though, however, this is with the volume up all the way on the bit X. And it's not very loud. And the reason for that is because it's not on. All right, pulling Costa Rica on 7155, very nice. So this works pretty well. Um, so let me show you about uh, what it's all about. And it's in bypass mode now. So what we've, what we've got here is just a standard 12 volt power jack, you know, uh, 2.1 by 5.5. And that powers this LM386 board. The LM386 board uh, also power is powered uh, well, I've got power going to that through uh, this switch here, dual pull, dual position switch. So we turn power on, it also powers this LED. And so it's got just a 10 cam resistor here and powers that LED so you know it's on, um, obviously. And then we're also bypassing, uh, when it's off, it bypasses the amplifier and connects the uh, tip of the um, audio jack direct to the speaker, which is what it was originally. So we've put an LM386 board in line. And the reason I'm using this board is because I could have homebrewed an LM386 amplifier, but it's just so easy to make one, to use these. There's four connections and, well, six connections. Put the, the speaker output and uh, power and line input. So. Really, really super simple. Of course, my favorite tool over here. We've got some hot glue going on. And on the back, we've got on and bypass. Yes, I'm using the old school labeler. <laughs> I think they're cool and they're cheap. That's my favorite part. So that's that. So the next thing to do is to wrap the tightener, you know, bolt, you know, bolt this to put this back together and then uh, make this all pretty. So let's do that. All right, so the next thing here is to simply lay this back like so, but this has to go on first. All right, make sure it still works. Yep. Doing good, so let's go ahead and turn it off. And a quick tip when you're putting in self-threaded screws back into the plastic, um, if you're not careful, you will cut more threads. So you don't wanna do that. So what I do is I just go ahead and drop them in here. And this is something I learned uh, when, as a young person, I became certified to work on uh, Hewlett Packard laser jet printers, uh, laser jet two P's, three P's, four P's, and four SI's, and maybe something else. 
Um, that's, that's back when HP was, was standard, stood for Hewlett Standard. That's what back when HP stood for Hewlett Packard, not was the actual brand, because Hewlett Packard is a real brand of real machinery, whereas HP is an acronym for horrible product. Anyway, uh, what you do is you put slight pressure down here and then roll backward. Hear that click? That means your threads are lined up. And tighten it up. Okay, and there we have it. Oh yeah, we have this to take care of. So this is not good. That's gonna break if I leave it like that. So I'm gonna use my favorite tool. here and if I really want to I can do this we go and as soon as that cools well I can just use it now again it doesn't have to cool as soon as it cools though it'll be uh, it won't be clear anymore so we pop this in here turn on we get a cool glowing effect <laughs> all right let's make sure it yep there we go so it sounds really good um, I'm noticing that the receiver on the micro X sounds real nice Yeah, so it, it, the audio is really good. I, I like the radio. Um, the only caveat is that when I go to transmit, it does pick it up. I'm thinking about grabbing uh, just about any toroid and doing a couple of wraps like way up here, which I probably could have done before I put it together, but I didn't think of it. But um, really not a big deal. <laughs> so anyway, thanks for watching. I sure do appreciate it. And uh, uh, if you've gotten this far, maybe consider hitting like and subscribing. So uh, thanks for following along in this little powered speaker build. And um, again, check the links below for the LM386 board. So, all right, we'll see you next time. And thanks for watching this MicroBitX series.